Hello, this is Teacher Marco from Phuket Pals, and I'd like to welcome you once again uh, to this GED Social Studies screencast. Uh, for today, I would like to talk about um, the end of World War One and the events uh, that happened after that post-war events. So this is the last video of my World War One series. Um, please stay tuned because I will be uh, starting with um, some other videos, all right, about other topics and um uh, by the way if you uh, like this video if you find this videos useful please hit the subscribe button below and don't forget to share it it helps us help more people like you now let's begin the last battles of world war one so in august of 1918 the allied commanders on the Western Front decided to go on the offensive. Starting on August 8, a series of battles were fought called the Hundred Days Offensive. So these battles included uh, the Battle of Amiens, the Second Battle of Somme, the several battles along uh, Germany's Hindenburg Line, and the Germans were pushed out of France and were forced to retreat back to Germany. So, armistice. By the end of the Hundred Days Offensive, um, the German forces were exhausted and um, they were running out of food and supplies. So what they did was on November 11, 1918, as you can see on the date here of the, the evening uh, Missourian, uh, on November 11, they requested an armistice. Now, an armistice is when both sides agree to stop fighting while a peace treaty is negotiated. So, the Allies agreed to the armistice at um, 11 a.m. on November 11, 1918. The fighting in World War I came to an end. So, what happened in the treaty negotiations? So, the Allied nations met in Paris and at uh, the Paris Peace Conference in 1919 to decide the fate of Germany and the Central Powers. Although uh, a number of nations took part in the negotiations, the major decisions and discussions were between the leaders of the Big Four, Big Four nations. Um, this included uh, George Clemenceau, um, as you all know, he's the Prime Minister of France during this time. David Lloyd George, the Prime Minister of Great Britain. Woodrow Wilson, the President of the United States. Um, and Vittorio Orlando, uh, the Prime Minister of Italy. So, each of the four nations had different opinions on how Germany should be treated. Uh, previously on my video about um, Wilson's 14 points, um, he felt that the best situation, so President Woodrow Wilson felt that the best solution was to incorporate um, his 14 points. He taught that Germany should not be blamed for the war or punished too harshly. However, like what I mentioned on my previous lecture, French Prime Minister Clement Chow felt that Germany was responsible for the war and should take the blame and be forced to pay uh, large reparations. Hmm, okay. So, what about the Treaty of Versailles? So, the Treaty of Versailles was signed between the Allied powers and Germany on June 28, 1919. Um, a few months after the armistice. Now, this officially ended World War I. The treaty was extreme, uh, like, like what I said, this treaty was extremely harsh on Germany. Um, it forced Germany to accept full responsibility for causing all the loss and damage of the war. Also, Germany was forced to disarm 
and give up land to France and to pay reparations of 132 billion marks. That's around, uh, around 442 billion in today's money. Dollars, okay? U.S. dollars. So, also, national borders, like new national uh, borders were established, right? So, um, the map of Europe changed significantly after World War I. So, several new independent countries were formed, like... Uh, Poland, Finland, Yugoslavia, and Czechoslovakia. So Russia became the Soviet Union, and the Ottoman Empire later became the country of Turkey. Um, Germany also had to give up the provinces of Alsace-Lorraine to France. Okay, now what about League of Nations? What is this? So if you still remember the 14 points, this is on the 14th point of uh, uh, Woodrow Wilson's 14 points, okay? So, the League of Nations as part of the Paris uh, Peace Conference, um, an organization called the League of Nations was formed. So, the League of Nations was formed in an effort to establish world peace. Its member countries hope to prevent wars in the future by helping to settle disputes between countries. The League also aimed to establish fair labor conditions. They also hope to improve uh, global health, control global arms trade, and protect minorities in Europe. Um, so the League was offic uh, officially founded by the Treaty of Versailles and had 42 founding member countries. All right. So this is just an overview of the end of World War II and uh, the treaties and what happened after the war. So let's go ahead and try to answer um, a GED social studies practice test here. After the World War I, the opposition of some members of Congress to uh, the Versailles Treaty was based largely on the idea that the treaty, so most of people in the U.S., uh, most members of the U.S. Congress think that the Treaty of Versailles was A, did not, did not punish the central powers harshly enough, B, did not give the United States an important role in world affairs, C, would not require the U.S. to join the League of Nations and might result in the loss of power of the United States, or D, would require the United States to assume the cost of rebuilding the war-torn European economies. So I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Okay, so I think we uh, uh, have have enough time. We have uh, already taught about the answer. So if you choose letter C, um, many P many members of the U.S. Congress oppose because it would require the U.S. to join the League of Nations and might result in the loss of power for the United States. So, basically, a lot of people of the, uh, a lot of members uh, of the U.S. Congress opposed because they don't think uh, that um, the U.S. might uh, lose power and they don't want that to happen, all right? Uh, they wanted the U.S. to uh, lead the League of Nations, all right? So our answer here is letter C, all right? So I hope that I was able to help you today, and uh, I want to thank you for uh, being a part of uh, this series, and thank you for watching all the videos. Please stay tuned. Don't forget to like and uh, subscribe and share uh, the videos that we have on this channel. 
Once again, this is Teacher Marco, and have a nice day.